Kevin Deal here, and on today's episode, we're gonna be exploring Kodak Gold 200 in 120 format, and we're gonna see how it works on portraits. Kodak is offering up gold as a cheaper option to Portra. I didn't bring any Portra today. Uh, I'm not doing a comparison necessarily, but I am just seeing how it looks on my work because it is cheaper per box. Now, I say that, but with all the recent price increases, it's really just what Kodak was selling Portra 400 for a mere month ago. If it's close, if it works really well for my work, uh, why not save some money? This is gonna be a pretty short episode. I'm just testing it out here uh, at Waterloo Park in downtown Austin, Texas. I'm gonna be working with Lexi from the Brown Agency. And we're gonna, we're just gonna see how the skin tones render. We're gonna see how the grain structure is. And we'll try some stuff in the shade. We'll try some stuff in the sun. Uh, we'll just kind of see how this film stock looks. We're gonna shoot everything today on my Mamiya RB67 with the 90 millimeter and 127 millimeter lenses. So I didn't bring my light meter with me today, but that's all right because I can just do what I normally do, uh, which is test in digital and finish in film. I brought my uh, RF 50 millimeter 1.2 with me today. And so I can just set the ISO on my R5 to 200, take some test shots with that at 50 millimeter, just to let me kind of know how things are playing with my shadows and my highlights and then that way I can get pretty close on the exposure. And then I can of course finish it on my RB67. I brought two rolls of gold 200 with me. So that'll give me a total of 20 shots in the six by seven format. So uh, I hopefully have a good hit rate today. Uh, I feel like if I can get two or three like really good shots from each roll, I'll be doing well. We're gonna do two different looks today and uh, we're using these colorful backdrops here at Waterloo Park uh, to test how this film performs. My goal today is that I'm hoping that Gold 200 ends up uh, becoming part of my regular arsenal, but uh, we'll just have to see what the tests tell us. Uh, early indicators that I've seen online is that the grain is a little bit busier than Portra, but the colors are kind of in the ballpark. But that's somebody else's YouTube video. I need to see how it works for my work. I need to apply it to how I do things and see if it actually works well for me. So anyway, it looks like Lexi's arriving, so uh, let's get started. So we started off in this amphitheater at the park. Uh, there was a lot of dappled lighting coming through. We were in the shade. I really wanted to test out the extremes of shadow and highlight detail on this film stock. Look this way real quick. So I got, yeah, there you go. One, two, awesome. Now I'm gonna get kind of a similar shot, but a little tighter. Beautiful. Now if I go to 3.5, should probably take this to one four hundredth. There we go. Actually, I'm gonna err on the side of overexposure. I wanna go a little lower, just like that. One, two, awesome. Perfect. So for the next shot, I moved Lexi out into the sunshine because I wanted to see how Gold 200 performed under harsher conditions. Can you rotate your hips a little bit more this way? There we go, like that. Bring the arm in more, more shoulder. There you go. One, two, awesome. I like the way that looks now. Something like this. All right, what I want you to do is I want you to scoop more this way, like a few feet. And you can, this one, you can kind of more lean in, a little more this way, scoop. I'm trying to get the, keep the sun out of your eyes. And you can go down, almost like you're more casual, just like that, yeah. Relax, close your eyes. I'm gonna wait until your eyes are ready. All right, right there. One, two, eyes open. Perfect. Really stick that knee forward. Yeah. Actually, I wanna see what happens if I get even lower with this shot. Oh yeah, that looks cool. One, two, three. Awesome. And 
Now I'm gonna get one that's more straight on. This one I may get super low on. Just like that. Hold that. And one, two, perfect. And now I'm gonna do a corner shot. I want nice dramatic angles and almost like you're gonna fall forward sort of thing, but let's see. Yeah, just like that. Loving that. I want a little bit more lean this way with it. Yeah, yeah. super sharp angles. That's what we want. I'm gonna go into portrait mode on this because it'll look better. One, two, perfect. Nailed it. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Now, I just need to change my angle a little bit so I can straighten it out. One, two, perfect. For the next look, we moved out into the open fields with the vegetation and the flowers, lots of greenery. I really wanna see how Kodak Gold 200 performed out in harsh sunlight. I'm happy to report it gave me excellent color reproduction. It held up pretty well. I just had to stop down a little. And uh, yeah, I think I'm definitely going to be using this film stock moving forward. Okay, so now that I have a shoot under my belt, what are my overall impressions of Kodak Gold? Um, I would say that overall, I do like the way that the uh, skin tones render. I like the color. I kind of put it somewhere in between Portra and Ektar 100 as far as look. Um, you know, it is a tiny bit grainier than Portra. Um, nothing that you're gonna notice if you're posting on social media, but definitely something you're gonna notice if you make prints. Now, one thing that I don't like about gold uh, compared to Portra and Ektar is it's a really flimsy film stock. Uh, when I was in my changing bag, I actually had a hard time telling if it was the backing paper or the actual film. I do wear gloves, so that does kind of handicap my sensitivity a little bit. But when I have Portra or Ektar in my bag, I know which one is the film and which one is the backing paper. Now, after a second, my fingers are like, okay, yeah, this is definitely the film. I'm just telling you, it is a little thinner. It is a little flimsier. It didn't play nicely with my film tray. Trying to get the uh, film down, look at how much that, uh, that right there, it curves up. Trying to get it to clamp down on my tray was a little bit of a pain. So it's a minor complaint and it's something that I can get used to, but uh, it is harder to scan. Now with the film bag thing and the tray thing, if you send your film off to a lab and then you also have a lab scan your film, none of this applies to you, but I do everything at home. I do everything myself. And so uh, this does add a little bit of time compared to Portra and Ektar. But hey, thanks for checking out this video today. If you liked what you saw, uh, please click the like and subscribe button below. I actually did uh, show how I use my RB67 a little bit on a shoot uh, because somebody had requested that they wanted to see me do a shoot with an RB67. Uh, and so I combined that with today's review of Kodak Gold. So keep those requests coming in. Uh, if you like what you saw, tell me in the comments below. If you have questions about gold, ask them in the comments below. If you have different experiences than I do, tell me in the comments below. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye.